Hello, and welcome to the demonstration of the Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure Self-Service Interface, which is the view for end users. In this module, we'll see how Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure allows end users to create and manage their Kubernetes clusters. Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure uses CNCF, Certified OpenStack Magnum Service, to manage Kubernetes clusters. Let's go through creating a new Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, we provide an extensive list of Kubernetes cluster settings, allowing end users to flexibly customize Kubernetes clusters according to their needs. So what are the steps to create a Kubernetes cluster? Well, first, we've got to name our new cluster. Here, we're naming it K8S2. Second, we need to select the Kubernetes version. Here, we're going to use 1.19, which is default, uh, selected by default. We support Kubernetes cluster upgrades to the newer versions, of course, so you'll be able to update your cluster to the latest version, if and as needed. Next, we need to add an SSH key to be able to access the virtual machines, which will be running our Kubernetes master and worker nodes. The next step, we've got to, of course, select a network to connect our cluster. And how do we do that? And how do we assign public IPs to our cluster? Well, in our example, we're going to use public IPs only for the Kubernetes cluster API, not for all of the Kubernetes nodes. This will help minimize the number of public IPs that you'll need. And I believe this is the most popular scenario anyways for most production environments. Next, end users can create Kubernetes clusters with highly available master nodes. And in this case, and we're showing with three of them, or with a single master node. For the production, we of course recommend to enable high availability as in this case, you'll have Kubernetes API up and running without downtime in the case of Kubernetes cluster upgrades or any hardware failures. Unlike many other public clouds, we also allow end users to select the size of the master node. Depending on the usage scenarios, Kubernetes requires different resources for the master nodes. Next, you can define your storage settings for the Kubernetes node volumes. We'll keep the default settings. And finally, the last stage, we will define the default worker settings. After cluster creation, you'll be able to add additional worker groups with custom settings. And at this step, we need to select the size of our worker and a number of workers in the group. Well, we wait for our cluster to be created. Let's take a look at adding some important details regarding our Kubernetes implementation. It of course takes some time to create the virtual machines for the master and the worker nodes, six virtual machines in this case. The system will also create the load balancers in an active passive mode to provide access to the Kubernetes API from your public network. Kubernetes cluster is tightly integrated with other services like volumes and load balancer services. If your Kubernetes application requires a persistent volume or external load balancers, those resources can be requested using the standard deployment file, and then they'll be provisioned automatically. You'll be able to manage those persistent volumes and the load balancers as well as well as all the other resources, of course, in your self-service interface. Next, let's take a look how to access an existing Kubernetes cluster. Of course, after the cluster's been created, you need to download the special configuration file called kubeconfig, and then use this file to access Kubernetes using kubectl. It's a command line tool or graphical interface just like Kubernetes dashboard or Lens. It's also a standard approach for other Kubernetes as a service implementations. And then last but not least, want to reiterate how we support multiple storage policies in Virtuoso hybrid infrastructure. And we also support them as a reminder for persistent volumes. 
don't forget to create the storage classes for all of your storage policies that you'd like to use. And you'll find an example of how to do this in the documentation provided. Thanks for your attention, and we look forward to reviewing other services in our upcoming videos.